Let's begin with a word of prayer and we'll move right along into today's lesson. We thank you, Lord, for this time we have to learn and grow. We seek to do the best we can and add to what we know. We love you, God, with all our hearts and to others' love we show. Pleasing you is our goal. Now to our lesson, we should go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Heroes Modern School Academy. My name is Mr. Lane. And I will be walking you through fourth grade English, week number 26 and day number five, okay? Uh, so today is going to be about listening and verbal training. We get a chance to listen and pay attention without interrupting, right? You're going to be a good listener. So we've learned a couple of things to help you with that. Things like the rise and fall of peaches, like the fall peach, the fall, the rise peach, the fall rise intonations. You've, you've learned a little bit about all of that coming through fourth grade English. Now guess what? You're going to try to put it into practice right now. You are going to get a chance to listen to me as I am reading a scripture to you without interrupting me. All right. How do I know how to do that? You are going to watch for my peach. You are going to see my voice is going to go up in the middle of my sentence. And when my sentence is done, my pitch is going to drop a little bit. All right. We've got to teach it because there are lots of people in the world. They don't know when <laughs> and how not to be rude listeners. You know, you don't want to be a bad listener. You want to be a good listener. So the way we're going to do it is I get a chance to read a scripture to you. You're going to listen to me. And then we are going to repeat that scripture together following a descent rise and fall of peaches, all right, in our sentences. Why are we using, using the scripture? Well, the reason we're using the scripture is because we want to intertwine your learning experience with the knowledge of God. So you don't use that knowledge that you're getting from us to do something bad. And that's what Deuteronomy chapter 6 tells us to do. Deuteronomy chapter 6 tells us to intertwine with every learning experience the knowledge of God. Because there are lots of bad people over there, there are lots of educated people that do bad things on the outside. Why? Because their learning experience was not intertwined with the knowledge of God. So we don't want that to, to be your story coming through HHA. You're not going to turn out to be a, a badly educated person under our work watch <laughs> by the grace of God. All right. So we're going to read that scripture together and you're going to listen to me. And then we're going to take turns to repeat that scripture right after each other. All right. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. All right, did you see how my peaches changed as I was reading that sentence to you? All right, I'm going to read it one more time. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Okay, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. All right, so let's read. You're going to repeat after me. Let's read it together. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. All right, so moms and dads, you're welcome to help your child come through this exercise as well. Multiple times over, they get to repeat these this scripture together with you, and they can learn something from it. Okay, great work. All right, um, the verbal training part of this lesson is going to be about enunciation. We want to get a chance to learn how to pronounce certain words properly by getting two words that are close in their pronunciation. We are going to repeat those words together to work on our enunciation skills a little bit better. Well, how is this going to go? Watch with me. All right, so this is what we are going to do. We are going to pair two words together. This is the verbal training aspect of today's lesson. So look at these two words over there. So this W-I-N and W-I-N-G. Well, this one in IPA is spelled like this. 
like this, right? Okay. And the phonetic respelling of it is like that, just as it is spelled ordinarily. And it goes like wing. All right. So when you see this 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 uh, I uh, letter like that in IPA, International Phonetic Phonetic Association symbol IPA, it is E. Wing. 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 All right. Now, what about this one? Well, this one is going to be like this and this and but with a little G to it. It's called wink. Wink. You see that G sound is going to come at the end of it. So wink and the phonetic respelling of it is just going to be like the word itself. Wink. All right. So let's try to pronounce the, pronounce these words together. Wink. 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 All right. All right. Let's try to do another one. What about this this word son and this is song, all right? That's the past participle of the word sing, all right? Sing, sang, song, all right. Now, son is going to have the IPA like this, son, uh, like this, all right? Or the phonetic respelling of it is going to be like that, son song and the word song is going to be like this song and that symbol is going to be like that or s <laughs> and and g song all right son song son song son song win win Win, wing. All right. Did you get something from it? I sure hope so. Well, that's what I got for you, boys and girls. Remember, God cares about you, and so do we. Bye bye. I'll be your hero's body, and as you study. With heroes born